The moon is a trap. Have you ever wondered why no one has been to the moon since 1972? And I mean the real reason, not the lies we've been told about the cost of space travel being astronomical. Well, let me tell you the true story, and I swear, this isn't just an incredibly cheesy 80s movie about robots from the moon. This is real human history. In 1989, 20 years after man first stepped on the moon, two astronauts named Jason Grant and Ray Tanner were on a routine expedition when they happened to drift near a desolate alien vessel. It was the discovery of a lifetime, and it was big. Very big. You always had a way with words. The ship was slowly being pulled into Earth's atmosphere, where it would burn up completely. So while they had the opportunity, Jason volunteered to explore the ancient ship, and the only thing he found that wasn't completely destroyed was a pod made of an unknown alloy and the mummified body of what appeared to be the first humanoid astronaut. He's 14,000 years old. Scientists were unable to peer into the pod, but they were able to run an analysis on the mummy astronaut, where they discovered its origin was from a very specific crater on the moon. Prometheus crater. Prometheus crater. When the pod was left alone, it opened by itself. As it gleamed our technology, the robot inside shot out mechanical tentacles and began to use random pieces to build itself into something different. As alarms blared throughout the facility, the security team assembled to face this new bizarre foe. But one scientist saw the potential in this new, scary looking robot. He doesn't mind the fact that the robot is made of both metal and spare parts from the mummified astronaut. He approached and opened a dialogue. Give us a sign. Get the son of a bitch! Let him have it! Open fire! A gunfight began, but the robot was hardly affected by human weapons. That is, until Jason climbed through the vents and put his shotgun point-blank to the robot's skull. Holy Look at all this damage! So now, with proof of extraterrestrial existence and a fear of the technology of the robots falling into Russian hands, NASA knew that they needed to fund another mission. We have to go back to the moon. Jason and Ray landed on the moon, the first humans to step foot on lunar soil in 17 years. And they're totally not just miniature action figures riding around on a remote control lunar rover. And the lander that they landed in is totally not just an amalgamation of aluminum foil and spare parts. Sometimes real life just looks like this. And this is real life. A third astronaut named George was stationed on an orbital shuttle and he was able to direct them towards the suspected origin of the mummified astronaut. Oh man. No wonder we never saw it from orbit. Inlaid in a crater's wall was a man-made structure that began to glow with a green light the moment the humans entered its detection. But the scenery wasn't all pleasant, because buried in the dirt outside of the base were human skeletons and destroyed robotic parts, a clear sign of a battle from over 14,000 years ago. So it's a good thing that they came prepared. Guns on the moon. I don't think we're the first ones, pal. 
Inside the ancient base, the astronauts found a sealed room that vented in breathable atmosphere once they entered. In the center of the room, they found a skeleton protectively cradling some kind of altar. And inside the altar, they found the second greatest treasure that a man could hope for. Well, hello there! It's a woman. After touching the altar, it opened and the woman inside woke up, acting hostile until Jason removed his helmet and showed her that she was rescued by fellow humans and not some new, strange machine. Using rudimentary speech, they were able to tell the space woman their names, and they learned that she was called Mira. Mira? That's a real nice name. After another quick encounter with a spider-like robot, Mira calls that killer robot a Callium, giving us a name to the killer mechanical species. You know, those Callium are really starting to bug me. But things could never have been so easy. The moon is a trap, after all. The moment the new humans landed on the moon's surface, Callium activated and began to scan the human technology. And by the time Jason, Ray, and Mira returned to their landing site, they found the lander had been taken. They turned the friggin' frogs gay! Leaving only a trail of footsteps for them to follow. George tried his best to help them locate the lander, but as he drifted closer to the moon's surface, he was shot down by the Callium's electric weapons, and his shuttle crashed and exploded, making George an unsung hero in our forgotten space history. Okay, Einstein. What next? We walk. Why didn't I think of that? Following the footprints, the trio of stranded humans found a newly constructed ship, but were quickly attacked by Callum guards. One Callum was destroyed easily, proving that guns in space are far more deadly than those on Earth. But in a surprise attack, Ray was grabbed by another Callium and squeezed before being tossed to the ground. Jason was able to destroy this sneaky robot, but by the time he got to Ray's side, he knew that it was too late. Just remember one thing. What's that? <laughs> Wait, you don't. Jake, no shit. From the machine. <laughs> Ray! Wait, Ray! No shit! <laughs> Ray! Now, Mira and Jason were stranded with no communication to NASA and no way to return to Earth. They set up a temporary structure and smooched a little bit, their hopeless situation causing romance to flourish. I woke you up. Just so you could die with me. But the romance came to a swift end when a robified Ray attacked. Unfortunately, their victory over the Raybot was short-lived as more Callium arrived and knocked each of them out, robo-napping them and taking them to their ship. Oh, Christ. That's what we are. Spare parts. As a Callium surgeon repelled from the ceiling, with the goal in mind to deconstruct its new human resources, Jason was able to free himself from his binds and destroy the surgeon with caveman-like efficiency. Ah! 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 
Now free on the Callium ship, Mira and Jason suited up and began to travel through the ship's core. As they climbed, they found hundreds of Callium pods and realized that the robots were planning a full-scale invasion of Earth. It's an all-out invasion force. At this time, NASA realized that the robots were coming towards Earth in a ship, and they believed that they had no good intentions for the planet. So they sent another crew of astronauts, outfitted with missiles and destructive weaponry into space, to intercept the hostile forces. Unfortunately, the ship was easily zapped by the Callium and left adrift while the power cycled. Intrepid's gone. Report status, Intrepid. No damage. Intrepid, can you still engage? Too far for our missiles. We're goddamn sitting ducks. Inside the robo-ship, Jason and Mira found the upper chambers and drifted through them until they found the lunar lander. The last piece of equipment they needed to complete this ship. And they waited 14,000 years for us to bring it. But Jason had an idea. You see, everyone knows that lunar landers are equipped with self-destruct capabilities. You never know what will happen in space, so having the ability to blow up your only way to escape back to Earth is a must in all space traveling situations. So Jason armed the self-destruct sequence and then had the genius idea of using his space gun as a thruster to escape the Callium ship. Government contractors. The two astronauts drifted in space, but came into radio contact with the intercept ship and were promptly rescued and returned to Earth, where they decided to live together forever and ever. It is all over now, and I am glad to be with you. Were the Callium really so easily defeated? Some believe so, but others have heard rumor that one pod survived, landing in a junkyard where it still lives to this day, constructing itself an army to one day take over our planet. And that is the truth of the moon. Not just some silly little 80s movie, but a true history of human space travel and a reminder of the dangers of our lunar neighbor. So beware, for the moon is a trap. This truth was revealed with great thanks to my YouTube members, fellow truth seekers and space enthusiasts that are all definitely not just robo-human hybrids. And that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. My give up. My give up. Gun guns on the moon.